OK, so what I have here is y equals negative x minus 3. And I like this one a lot. Um, because now we need to determine the slope. So I've, wrote in, I've written in what the slope is, what the y-intercept, and how we're going to do that, and then how we're going to plot those up. So, so the main important thing, when, I, when I'm given a, uh, a linear equation in slope-intercept form, I like to write out, again, what we have as our slope. So in this case, we can say our slope is going to equal negative 1. However, we always want to write our slope as a fraction in change of y over change of x. So therefore, I'm going to write this as negative 1 over 1. But I could also write this as 1 over negative 1. And I'll show you why it does not matter which way we write it with the negative on top or the negative on bottom. And if you were to calculate this, plug this in your calculator and you check, you're still going to get the negative 1. It doesn't matter which way you write this. But when we write the y-intercept, I know I have a y-intercept value of negative 3. But we want to write it as a coordinate point. When this, in this case, is going to be 0, comma, negative 3. All right, so now that I've determined what the slope is and the y-intercept, now we're just going to simply graph. So I have my y-axis and now my x-axis. And I'm just going to make some units, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, so my y-intercept is at negative 3. That's usually the starting point that we always like to start at, because we know that's where the graph crosses the y-axis. So it's usually the easiest point to plot. So 0 comma negative 3 is going to go down 3, 1, 2, 3 on the y-axis. So that's my y-intercept. Now, I need to use the slope triangle to help me find my next coordinate point. And I told you, it doesn't matter which one you use. If you want to use negative 1 over 1 or 1 over negative 1, and I'll show you why it doesn't matter. So let's use two different colors here. I'll use uh, pink and black. All right, so let's do pink for the first one. If I use negative 1 over 1, that means the change in my y coordinates to get to the next point, right? Because a line is a set of coordinate points. So we have to have more than one point to draw, uh, to draw a graph. So I need to find the next point. And I can use the slope to find my next point. So if I have negative 1, that's my change in y. That means I'm going to go down negative 1. And then the, po and the change in the x is positive 1. So I'm going to go to the right one. All right. So my slope triangle is just going to look something like that. Now, let's say I wanted to use this one. Let's say I made the negative on the bottom, and that's OK. That means my change in y is a positive 1. So I'm going to go up 1. And then I'm going to change in my x is negative 1. So I'm going to go to the left one. My units aren't very exactly the same, but you can say up 1, negative 1. And that's that slope triangle. All right, So you can see either way you can create a slope triangle. And the cool thing about the slope triangle is you can just continue the pattern. All right, It doesn't matter which direction you keep on going. You can just continue the pattern. And my uh, units aren't exactly the best lines that I've ever drawn. But you can see when you follow them, it doesn't matter if you're going in the negative direction or the positive direction. They're still all going to fall along the line. Now what's nice about this one is we have an x and a y-intercept. The y-intercept, as we've already found, is 0 comma negative 3. And the x-intercept, in this case, is going to be negative 1, 2, negative 3, comma 0. So we can write those both as points. That are, uh, and this graph is going to continue indefinitely in the positive and in the negative direction. Thanks.